Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, man. Let me not, let me not fall over here. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well today. I got a quick little video for you guys. Oh, I'm trying to make it quick. Try to make it super easy, simple, quick. <laughs> it's about that time of year, guys. Beginning of the year for me. Beginning of the season for fishing. So I'm going to be repacking my, my trailer, you know, wheel bearing. So that's going to be a lot of fun, right? So I got this one here already, you know, already apart. Only thing I can do is fill it, fill it up with grease, put it back together. But I'm going to show you guys step by step how to take all this all apart. You know, clean it up, re-grease it, and put it all back together. Like I said, we're gonna try to make this super simple, super easy for anyone who wants to, you know, who wants to do this by themselves. Um, not that hard. Probably take maybe 20, 30 minutes per per wheel. Um, but again, I'll take you guys through everything you need to know about how to repack your wheels. All right. So before we get started, first things first. What's the reason you're changing your? I'm sorry, or repacking your wheels, or when should you repack your wheels? Some people do it each year, every two years, or some people do the mileage, which is around, I think it's like 10,000 miles when you should repack your, your uh, wheel bearings. So I'm definitely way over that. <laughs> and it's not, not good, not safe to be doing so. So me personally, I know I take my butt out a lot, at least once a weekend or once every other weekend. Um, so I do put a lot of miles on, on this thing here and I, I need to be changing every year. Okay? And, and like I said, either 10,000 miles or every year, every two years. If you if you got the you know boat or a trailer that you're using or, or a little camper that you have that you you know use every blue moon, by all means check it or change it. It's like the two safest things you can do. Okay, don't just leave it be and think it's okay. Oh, I haven't driven it in three years. Should be still fine. Definitely check it, man. Other than that, let's get right to it. All right, here we are with the uh, list of items that you need to get this job done. Okay, first things first. Of course, you need your jack and the jack stand. You want to make sure you're safe with this situation. By all, by all means. Safety is first. Uh, also, uh, I don't care if it's a rock, a brick, you name it. Get something to hold that that will well hold your boat from moving back, especially if you work on a John boat. Uh, whatever case may be, you want to make sure that you're safe. Like you know, once once you start trying to you know take off your bolts there, that the entire <laughs> trailer, camper, you na you name it, so it doesn't all roll back on you <clears throat> or it doesn't move. Period. My boat. I got a John boat here. She's kind of light. All right, so we got safety. Safety is good. Cool. That's checked off the list. Next, uh, you're going to need a rubber mallet, rubber hammer, rubber mallet. Uh, that's going to come in, come in handy real soon. And it's going to be one of my main things that I'm going to love using the, during this project. Like I said, I showed you a little earlier. Uh, the first wheel, that was the opposite side. Uh, now I'm working on this one here. Um, I got a, I got a uh, folding, kni folding knife blade. Uh, my, my, one of my teachers in my HVAC class, he calls it a hand cutter. You're going to need, gonna need a, a nice little box cutter here. Or some some type of knife, some kind of some type of item that you can cut. The reason I say you're gonna need this. When I took out the first wheel, I had a bunch of look like look like fishing line or something all wrapped up behind uh, that bearing back there, or the entire hub actually. So yeah, you might need something like that to cut that stuff out. Of course, your well, I'm sorry, right here. This is a 13 by 16 uh, socket. Um, it just kind of makes that, that process a little easier, a little quicker. Or your standard way is just fine at taking, that up, taking those off. Uh, so some chain locks and some needle nose pliers. Another key piece here, um, if you guys want to go to Lowe's, Home Depot, get a scrap piece. I think it's one by one. Um, this came in handy and I'll show you guys in just a second of how handy this was. Uh, you're, pretty much you're going to need it to punch out the other bearing. Um, or something very small, but this this was like perfect fit Worked out perfectly uh, So what I got here is some Lucas uh, red and tacky grease uh, multi-purpose uh, Anti-seize I think it was that number two. Yeah, number two both trailer. And I was like, yep. There she goes. So this is what I'm using I can see I already started messing with it. This is actually supposed to go on like a a, um, a grease gun um, I, I, I definitely messed up and grabbed this instead of that. I think they have like smaller actual little cylinders, you know, containers that you guys can get. Um, so unless you got already got a grease gun, sure. You pump that on a gun, you start pumping it, you know, where it needs to go. Um, need about this many shop towels, okay? Make sure you have a roll of shop towels. That's, you see how much I used on one, okay? And I think that's about it. Oh, yes, and some gloves. You know, in case your woman says, you know, make sure your hands are nice and soft and subtle. You know, if you want to hug her, I'm going to leave it at that. Otherwise, yeah, that's about it. So you're going to need about 30,000 towels and a couple, couple tools that, you know, most people might have already. And let's get started. Get this thing knocked out. First things first, loosen 
each lug nut, uh, then we'll jack it up. When you start, <laughs> since you're going to be turning, turning this way to loosen the lug nuts, put the brick toward the stone in the front. <laughs> Safety first, right? So you see I got a little wood block here, kind of helps it higher distances. My, my jack does not keep that high, so get your jack in place. Uh, just in case you guys didn't know, uh, like I said, the jack stand is good for safety, but it's also to relieve pressure off the jack itself, just in case you know, anyone didn't know that. You're not supposed to leave pressure on your jack. That's not what the jack is. That's not the jack's purpose. It's literally just to lift. <laughs> But you're not supposed to leave first. I mean, granted, I still have it sitting right here. You know, super worst case scenario, something happens with, the, with my jack stand. Um, and if you were to with a vehicle, just again, it's just in case you guys didn't know, sometimes I put a tire, my tire take off, I'll put it under the, the like right between, I mean, right under the frame, uh, as well as the jack stand, I'll put, you know, put a jack stand up as well. And I'll have this kind of sitting right here. Worst case scenario, again. But like I said, just in case you didn't know. Okay, hope you guys see pretty well. So I kind of moved this earlier today. Uh, but the purpose of the, of the chain locks, you get a you know good little grip. Again, we're, we're not trying to crush this thing, okay? But you're getting a nice little grip on there. You're moving it left and right, top and bottom, left and right, top and bottom, and eventually it'll wiggle its way out um, as you're gripping this. Like I said, it's not it shouldn't be crazy difficult. Um, but again, like I said, I did left, right, top, bottom. Like I said, we're just kind of wiggling, wiggling this. This is the dust cap. Look at your dust cap off. So you want to lay things kind of in the order in which you remove them. It kind of helps you out, you know, so you can see which which direction to go. Thing, you know, put things back back in. Uh, but this one's, you know, pretty straightforward. Not not too many pieces here. But yeah. So first things first. You know, from what I'm looking at, again, some people's uh, tire wheel bearings, you know, assembly may look a little different, but predominantly it's all the same process. Um, behind this grease here is going to be a a pin, and I'm kind of poking it right now. And that's when you need the needle nose pliers. So let me clean this up a little bit and I'll show you what it looks like. This is where our 20,000 sheets of uh, shop towel come into play. Please take note of how much grease you actually see, like all around this, inside your uh, dust cap. Uh, it's all gonna be, you're, you're literally gonna <laughs> try to repack this thing just as much as what you see coming out. Unless someone did it incorrectly um, initially, but otherwise you're gonna pack this, the interior of this, uh, the bearings. You don't want to hold back on the grease. You want to pack that sucker good, okay? So needle nose pliers come to play. Um, yeah, so you want to rotate this. Might take a little might take a little strength, but you want to rotate this out until you straighten it. Because we're trying, we're gonna have to take this pin out. That's the goal here. That doesn't work. Like I said, it might be a little left, a little right, but it might take you a second, but eventually she'll start, start revealing herself, okay? Jesus. <laughs> All right, so with some tender love and care, pull that pin, pull that pin out. Next thing is this here. So that one's kind of moving a little bit. And just in case yours is a little, a little locked here, because this, this is kind of how my, my, my other one was. Um, so you're supposed to be able to grab this and just, you know, spin it off, spin it off this uh, threading here. Okay? Supposed to. But this one's a little tight, just like the other one. So what I did was take my chain locks. And again, you don't want to be trying to kill this thing, but you want to get it started with the turning. Uh, honestly, it seems kind of seized up a little bit. Say so it should, it should be loose enough to turn by hand, but if not, just start working it off with your uh, chain locks. So eventually, it'll get, should be, like I said, taken off by hand. So you get that all the way off, that out the way. All right. So next, you should be able to pull this, pull this entire assembly out to you. Like don't, don't like don't yank it off. Because uh, what you want to do is pull, the, is get this bearing. Uh, some of them have a seal on the front. Uh, I'm sorry, it's almost like a washer. Uh, be careful if you have a washer, understand or, or remember or write it down, take a picture, whatever you need to do um, to remember which direction that washer went. Okay, Because some of them have like a little lip on it. But uh, in case of mine, I, I just have a bearing on the front. Okay, so you just kind of slowly work it out so you can grab it. 
There's one there. And if you look at your bearing, so your bearing is going to have a, is a slight grade, okay? Um, down to like a smaller, a smaller side, okay? So like I said, it's a slight grade going down to a smaller side. So you got to remember that this smaller side goes in towards the boat itself or towards the trailer. Um, I believe my rear one, the smaller side comes out towards the wheel, the wheel itself. So when you're taking it off again, remember which side goes in which direction. Like I said, if you need to take a picture or record yourself, whatever case may be, you don't want to mess that up. And the other thing you don't want to mess up <laughs> is this right here. When I say this, I put my entire uh, assembly back together and the flat side was facing that way. I was like, how in the heck did I do that? Rushing too fast, moving too fast. So flat side needs to be where the wheel, wheel uh, touches on this side out here. <laughs> okay, so now we can kind of pull this assembly off. Nice and, nice and easy like. So again, remember, like I said, remember how much, I don't know if you guys can see inside of there. Remember how much um, grease you're seeing. Cause you're almost gonna, like I said, you wanna re replace that like that or fill it up, you know, fill up a, gr a good amount. Again, you don't wanna be, you don't wanna not have enough grease. Okay, so we gotta get to the second bearing. The second bearing is actually behind this, uh, it's like a seal, okay? You guys see this? Um, it's, a, it's a seal sitting here. And again, that, that piece of wood I had earlier uh, what I, was what I'm going to use to put through and knock that. It's another bear. It's a bearing sitting here. If I ask if I clear up a little bit, you probably see a little silver. Um, but it's a bearing sitting here and a seal. I put the piece of wood in, knock it through. But I'm going to show you guys that in two seconds. Um, but you don't, you don't want to use metal to tap that out because you don't want to damage anything. Okay. So like I said, best bet is use wood or plastic. Some some guys might have PVC pipe that can fit. Uh, whatever case may be, but you don't want to use metal to damage anything. So what I'm going to do right now is grab out as much grease out, out the way as I can. Again, like I said, have a bunch of towels, <laughs> a trash bag, trash can, you name it, because you want to get this out your way, get this and get as much old stuff out as possible. All right, now it's time for my piece of wood. Okay. So I'm going to, again, I have to knock out this, the seal and the uh, other uh, bearing. So all I do is insert, let's make sure you guys can see that. All I do is insert, I like I'm knocking out, knocking out this side. So I'll insert my little one by one here. Rubber mallet comes into play. Hold it up, give it some taps so you can knock that other bearing out. There she goes, just dropped out. And that's it again. So if you know damage done to the bearing itself, Get your wood back out of there. So now that we have all the pieces here, right? And you guys see what condition they are in. They are dirty, old, old grease. I've been running this thing for flipping three, no, three years, two years, three years without touching a thing. That's what happens when you just want to fish. You don't want to be stuck on the side of the road with a, you know, wheel missing. So definitely guys take care of your maintenance. Maintenance is very important. So what we're gonna do here, again, like I said, we're gonna need as many <laughs> as towels and shop towels, whatever case would be as you need. Get this stuff as cleaned up as best as possible. It might not be sparkling clean. I'm not saying take a power washer to it, but get this thing cleaned up real pretty light, okay? So all the old grease, try to make it disappear, man. And I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so now we've taken a few minutes to clean up our items. Again, I'm not saying you're gonna get this thing like crazy sparkling clean, but again, you wanna try, I don't know if you guys can see in there, um, but you're trying to get it as much as old, like I said, old grease, old stuff off of your items, um, as much as possible. Okay, so that's what my bearings look like. Uh, that cap, cap has some extra stuff here on the back, not sure, but, Inside's pretty clean. It's all my stuff's about 90% there. <laughs> That's pretty good. The dust cap, not bad on that one. That was pretty good. All right. So next, we want to go ahead and grease up our items. I mean, I know I look kind of backwards right here with the this end open. Don't worry about that. Whatever you have with it, whether you have the the actual gun itself, the um, grease gun, or you would do what I'm doing, just kind of pop open one of the sides and access some grease. 
Okay, whatever you got to do. Since I have reached as much as I can inside this one, I think I'm going to use this side. That matter. As long as you get it done, get the job done, man. I think this thing costs like five bucks or something like that. So use as much as you need or you know have to. Make sure you get the job done right. All right. So first things first. But you guys go ahead and take a good hefty amount, about yay much, and I want you to put that in your hand. Okay, like so. Because next, what we're going to do? Can you see inside? That little ring inside of there, or I'm sorry, inside of your bearing there, where the actual, you know, bearings of the movement is taking place. First, I'm going to try to get grease up inside that little gap there. Again, make sure, make sure you guys can see that gap. That's a little gap on both sides. So, there's two two ways that I've, now I've done it one way, on my other one, but there's two ways I've seen it done. Uh, one is the way, method I was going to tell you guys to use first, which is pretty much a press into the grease, press it down into your hand, pull away. Okay, can you see how that that got stuck right up in there? That's the goal. We want to fill that fill that that hole. I mean, sorry, the hole, but <laughs> fill that gap around it. Same thing on the other side. Same thing. But I've also seen people do. It looks. It, I don't know. Kind of weird to me, but some people kind of do one of these, kind of like a quick hit into it. Which I think both methods work as long as you get as long as you fill that gap up with grease. That's the main goal here. So I'm just going to use the pressing, press down method. A little rotation, press down off the edge to make sure we're getting grease all the way in there. Okay. Again, this is going to get kind of messy, but we got to get the grease in there. Flip your sides, fill in your other, your other gap. All right, so place this down for just a half a second so we can get to the other bearing. So with any extra that you have or if you want to grab some new grease, so what we're going to do with that is fill in this, this seat where, where the bearing is going to sit at, period. You see that? This is a silver ring sitting here. Um, I mean, eventually, you're, you're literally going to like fill this entire thing, but you want to make sure you get a good coat on this first. This is what I personally personally like to do. Um, again, we this is not going to be pretty, but you make sure you get some everywhere, okay? All the way around this, this silver lining. Again, we have to do the same thing on this side, filling in this uh, silver ring. Uh, and right before you get to this step, you can even put you can put grease inside of here. You can fill this area up. Uh, when I say fill it up, get a good a good amount uh, inside this this area here because this right here is going to be sitting right on the shaft here. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to get a good amount in here. Again, when I say good amount, like I said, do not lax in this man. Get get some in there. Okay, couple at least four or five nice glob sizes in there, man. Alright, so back to my bearings real quick before we put those in place. The next part you want to cover is the outside of the bearing. Like I said, it's gonna be a little messy, but you wanna cover that you wanna cover all these all these bearings. Because these these are gonna rotate, but you wanna make sure you got enough grease in here uh, to make sure everything's you know working properly. So you take your little glob and you literally cover the outside of that all the way around those bearings. Okay? Get more if you need, of course. Nice little coating on, on, on those bearings. Okay, so the bearing I was just working on is going to be going into the, like I said, back of this uh, hub here. So this would be sliding on in this direction. So what we're going to do is put the bearing in first. Again, make sure you got a nice good coat uh, up inside this um, area here. Take that bearing you were just working on with all the coated grease on the outside. I'm going to slide that, slide that right in there. And she'll, she'll stop, you know, once you get it. Nice and even like it'll stop on that lip that's sitting there. And again, these bearings have a slanted side. The slanted side of the bearing is going inward. Like I said, inward towards towards this hub. Okay. And I'm gonna show you just so you guys a little reminder. Like I said, I don't know if you can see and you and you'll feel it. Like I said, this side over here is technically a little more angled in, and this side's wider. Okay, so I put that one in the previous one in like so. Okay, the slanted side goes in. Okay, so that's the back bearing. On the back bearing, you have your seal. Okay, you can put grease down inside the seal before you apply it onto this section section here. There's some ins inside, you know, inside the rim. I told you it's best to put grease everywhere. Be safe, right? And 
And it's, like I said, this goes on the rear uh, of this hub here. Like I said, flat side should be facing, facing out towards the tire. That first bearing went in. Now it's the seal. It goes in the back. That's a nice. So this, it may press in, but if it doesn't, okay. Uh, sometimes, I mean, the other one was a little tight as well, so don't worry about that. So that's when, that's when my little rubber mallet comes back into play. Just little taps, should slide that thing in. I right, say, so you want to make sure this is this is all in, either flush, flush mounted, or right, you know, right on that, that nice ledge. Again, you want to make sure it's nice, nice and even. So next is the front side, the side that is going to be on the wheel side. Again, that bearing, we should, we're going to put a little grease around this edge first. You know, it looks like you got enough grease, but you know, like I said, you'd rather have more than enough. And again, it's good to rotate these little bearings around, make sure that grease gets up in there real good, because this is what's going to be rotating those tires. Okay, like I said, make sure your slanted side is going into the assembly. And that sits right, right down there, right, just like that. You can do this first, or you can slide, um, I'm sorry, I just about to say slide this on here, but make sure there's some grease here. But you just want to make sure you get some grease in there for sure. So make sure the correct side is facing out. Don't be like me and have to take it all back apart. But you see how that slides through? There's your bearing there. I'll clear some of this grease out the way. And like I said, this, this whole thing is going to be full of grease. Don't worry about it. But make sure that bearing is pushed right up in there. You just heard a little air pop out there. If you heard it or not, of course, my broken fender. <laughs> Next is this piece here. This will be going on clockwise. Um, it might take a little bit to, you know, a little force or you suppose you're supposed to be able to do it by hand. Uh, but sometimes it takes a little pressure, like right, right now, right, mine's getting a little tight, but just keep working it back until it stops. It's only hand tighten. Okay. Okay. So hand tighten down until you can see the hole in which that pin went through. So back to the uh, little pin there. I'm going to slide that sucker through. Might have to get a little, again, give it a little love. <laughs> okay. You want to make sure it gets low enough to clear so the dust cap can go back on. You got to do what you got to do. But make sure she clears, clears this uh, little rim here so that dust cap can go back on. Uh, then from that point, you want to go ahead and bend Put the two, put the two together. Put the two, I'm sorry, two little tabs here together. And bend that sucker back up towards, towards the uh, initial piece, or the final piece that went in. But then at the end of that, back to your rubber mallet. Kind of finish it off there. All right, okay, we're gonna fill this sucker up because it's gonna, if you guys remember how, you know, I took it off, it was a bunch of grease all right here. Now we're going to fill this up with grease and then place it on top of this and, and then rubber mallet to finish off again. All right. So again, like I said, get it, get it nice and packed. Uh, we're going to slide this on. Um, if it was easy coming off, it might slide right back on. Otherwise it might need some uh, tender loving care as I call it. Tender loving care, right? Kind of left, rights, up, downs. Clean up shop a little bit, you know. And I'm just working working those bearings. I mean, I know you know you'll take it off for a test drive, but I just like to move around a little bit, get stuff moving a little bit. But yes, that that pin is very important to get back in the right place because it holds that little that little uh, nut that's on there, so it doesn't back out and your whole you know whole hub doesn't come off. You don't want that. That's about it, man. Lastly, you know, put put your tire back on, rotate your rock, brick, cement block. Doesn't matter. Rotate that to the opposite side. Because when you tighten, you'll be going to the right, and trailer boat will kind of go that way. So uh, you can either, like I said, get them snug. That's the first thing. Or if you're if you're using this again, you don't kill them right now. Get them snug. Well, opposites. Get them snug for now. Drop it down. 
then you tighten it up. Don't kill it, but get it tight and then a little bit more. It's how <laughs> some people, you know, you might have the torque specs, by all means go by that, but what I do, like I said, I get it snug with the uh with this here, and I do a little bit more after that, just a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. Alright, guys, I think that wraps it up. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like fishing, if you guys like gear reviews, like little projects, things like that. I've done projects on my transducer, things on, you know, units, you name it. Subscribe to the channel if you like things like that. I greatly appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys like, liked it. You guys think, you know, you may learn something or help you out a little bit. Also, share this video with a friend. You never know who you can help out. Somebody might have been talking about the other day. Share this video with them. Maybe help them out. You never know. But again, thank you guys for watching. That's it for my little John boat here, my little trailer, free packing. You guys take care. See you guys next time out in the water. Out.